wanted to ask you some serious substantive questions about policies in Louisiana and, um, and skip sort of the, the, the regular questions that you get all the time and no, really get into the issues. Um, you're running against the guy, Garrett Graves, who was Bobby Jindal's coastal advisor. And I'm wondering what you thought about the recent passage of Senate Bill 469, which killed the, the levy lawsuit. Well, the whole concept of fighting against finding out about the erosion in the marsh is, I think, a step backwards. Now, I'm not prepared to say whether the Corps of Engineers or the oil and gas companies or the trappers or Mother Nature is responsible for the damage. But there are two things that are certain. There is damage and erosion is continuing to happen. And if we don't do something about it, New Orleans will some, someday be on the shoreline. We don't want that to happen. Now, in my opinion, I thought that the most prudent and proper thing to do was to have the courts make a decision about if there was damage, to what extent, and to what extent the core, the nature, and the oil and gas companies and trappers are responsible, and issue a judgment to hold each of these entities responsible for its share of the damage. But uh, people like Graves and General seem to think that uh, the oil and gas companies have no obligation to repair the damage if they did any. And I'm not saying they did, but I think we ought to find out if they did. But I thought it was very a step backwards for them to do what they did to prevent the courts from having a hearing to decide what happened. Right. Is this an issue you'll be um, uh, campaigning on, coastal restoration? Is it an issue well, that I, affects your I district? Am, I am and have, and I will, uh, because it's a very serious present and future problem for our state. And my point is, that's not just Louisiana's coast, it's America's coast. Just like the coast of California and Florida and New York. And I think we properly should involve the federal government in any kind of settlement and resolution of the problem. Uh, there's a, uh, James Carville, the Raging Cajun, this is my friend came and gave this question. James Carville, the Raging Cajun, famously said that all campaigns need three issues to resonate with voters and just keep it simple with three issues. So, what do you think that the three issues that you're can what, what, you, what are your three main issues in this campaign? Well, certainly I'm dependent upon the fact that I have been in politics for a long period of time. I served successfully as governor of the state for 16 years. And I also have been in Congress, unlike the other candidates running. And I would have an advantage of seniority if I get elected. And the issue that I see is this attitude that the present administration in Louisiana has that it's all business and industry and nothing for the poor, the disadvantaged, the uneducated. They have taken away money out of the educational system. They made it burdensome for students to go to college because of tuition costs. They have decimated the health care services in the state that has been a traditional great achievement for Louisiana, and I, I don't like to see that happen. I'm curious about what you think about the efforts underway in um, St. George, the area of southern eastern Baton Rouge, East Baton Rouge Parish. And it's a very controversial issue, you may not want to weigh into it, but... Well, I don't live in Baton Rouge, and I, I don't uh, have any opinion. Uh, frankly, I think that's left up to the voters. However, if I voted, I don't think I would vote for the separation. Right. And what do you, and, and uh, you know, more on education, I guess I wanted, wanted to ask you about what you think about um, the recent sort of overhaul of the Louisiana public education system, the, the charter schools that have been popping up everywhere all across the state, and um, the, vouch the school voucher program. Do you have an opinion on the merits of that program or? I, I think that any time you take away money that's supposed to be for the public school system, and give it to the private system unless it directly goes to the student, like transporting the student to school, then I think you're not only violating the Constitution, but I think you're doing damage to the public school system. And ultimately, if you continue to chip away from it, it's going to fall of its own weight. 
I had a, a series of questions that I got from when I said that I was going to drive down here to Baton Rouge, I put it on my Facebook and asked my friends to submit serious questions only. And I got this one more than once, and I'll, um, a few of them I'd like to ask you. But, um, recently, Jindal signed House Bill 388. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but it's um, it had to do with uh, access to abortion clinics in the state of Louisiana and the effect of it. Uh, they say will will be to close four of the state's five clinics. Uh, he also recently signed another bill that would keep um, pregnant women alive on mechanical life support. Um, and a lot of people see this as an erosion of uh, pro-choice you know, women's rights, um, and an issue that already has popped up in the campaign um, in, this, in Mary Landrieu and Bill Cassidy's Senate campaign. <laughs> Curious about what you thought about those 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 issues and what you think about that bill. Well, we, we all have to recognize that since Roe v. Wade, the Supreme Court has laid down guidelines that we have to live by because it's the law of the land. Within those parameters, then I think that we need to do whatever we can to take care of the health of the woman and the child. I don't think that government bureaucrats ought to tell a woman who's been raped or who's impregnated by incest or whose life is in jeopardy that she has to bear the child. That's a decision that she and her doctor should make in her own best interest. And I don't want government bureaucrats deciding that for her. Now, it's kind of interesting to me, but the very people who yell the most about getting government out of their lives are the ones who want government to come in in these situations and dictate to the woman. Now look, am I for abortion? No, I'm not. I don't know anybody who is for abortion. But I'm also interested in a woman's rights to make some decisions for herself based upon the Roe v. Wade in the Supreme Court. Right. Another question I got um, was about um, the ways in which Louisiana, you know, first of all, there was an article that came out last year in the Times Picune about Louisiana being the prison capital of the world. That there are more people incarcerated per capita in Louisiana than anywhere else. And I'm curious about what your thoughts are about the prison industrial complex, the privatization of, um, of prisons in, in Louisiana, and what ways we can, how we can change that. Well, number one, we have too many mandatory sentences and too many minimum sentences. And not enough discretion is left to the trial judge because no case fits everybody. A crime that you commit may be in certain circumstances that justify some kind of leniency. On the other hand, somebody else doing the same thing based upon prior violence might not require that or justify it. My point is, I don't believe that we are the most corrupt people in the universe. I, I, I don't think that it's fair to say that people in Louisiana deserve to be in prison. But I do recognize that drugs has created a serious problem for us, and it's obvious to me that just say no has been a dismal failure, and we, we need to address, in my opinion, more preventive care and also curative care for those who are caught in that web, rather than simply throwing them in a locked cell. And as far as the privatization of prisons, what do you think about this well, idea that prisons, prisons were not made to make money. Prisons were made to care for people who cannot live in outside society. And these people who buy these prisons do so to make money. And they do so at the cost of the services and the conditions that they render for the inmates. I believe that the prison system is a function of government and should be maintained by government. It's sort of a, it's a good segue into the question that I got about the charity hospital system. And um, a lot of people ask me to ask you, what do you think about the privatization of our charity hospital system? Again, we, we had a, a magnificent hospital system. We were the only state in the nation that had a statewide charity system, going back to the days of Huey Long. When I was governor, I built a charity system in Houma, one in Monroe, one in Lafayette, and I modernized the system in Lake Charles and in Columbia and in Shreveport because I believe that the state has a proper role in providing health care for its citizens. 